Hey there everyone, this is the Grumpy Meeple coming at you with some pretty timely news here on the Marvel United X-Men campaign. Shit's getting real! So, they just announced, and this is a big surprise to me at least, I, I really did not see this coming. Um, they just announced a Fantastic Four expansion. So if we scroll down a bit here, you can see there you go. You got Doom, you got The Thing, you got Sue, Reed, and uh, Johnny, and the Silver Surfer is actually in here too, although he's, is he on the box? I don't see him on the box, which is odd, but okay. Um, so $35, Fantastic Four expansion, get all these really pretty awesome looking sculpts. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. I love the Fantastic Four, but, you know, this is an X-Men themed set and the Fantastic Four really have very little to do with the X-Men. I mean, they intersect with them, you know, just like any other team does. Um, and up until very recently, you know, Mr. Fantastic and the Invisible Woman, their, their son was thought to be a mutant, Franklin Richards. Um, but I believe it turns out he's actually not technically a mutant. Uh, spoiler alert on that. So I kind of don't know what this has to do with this campaign. Kind of comes out of left field. I was expecting a Dark Phoenix expansion. I can't believe they're not doing a Dark Phoenix expansion. Um, it makes me wonder if there's some kind of potential licensing issue with that because it's, you know, the most iconic X-Men story ever told, basically, and to completely ignore it just seems bizarre. Um, but, you know, this expansion does look super cool. I mean, it looks like there's a new mechanic here related to teamwork for the Fantastic Four, which I think is great because, you know, they are kind of a family, so they work together very closely. Um, and these sculpts are just like, look at that, that is so cool. What's he standing on there? I can't even quite tell what he's standing on, but uh, you've got Sue doing something. I don't really know what that's supposed to be. She's being partially invisible or coming out of invisibility or something. Oh, I see her leg is clear. Oh, that is really incredibly cool. Um, so if you can see here, part of the sculpt is actually clear. So it's like she's mid kind of disappearance. You've got Johnny Storm all fired up. He's got a nice, looks like he's got a nice um, sculpted four right on his chest there for you to paint up. And then you've got Ben Grimm, the thing. Who doesn't love the thing? This miniature looks awesome. Um, really craggy. Looks like it would be really easy to paint. Um, and <laughs> he's just got that look on his face. A classic kind of, he's such a grump. He's a grump. He, he, he and I should team up because we're both kind of, he's kind of grumpy. I love it. And then you've got the Silver Surfer looking incredible. Holy mother of... Yeah, that's a really cool miniature too. You don't even need to paint that. I don't even think I would paint that. Um, because that that is amazing. And then not only do you get Doom, but you get anti-hero Doom. Which, um, the more anti-heroes they throw into this game, the better. It's just giving you more and more options. Um, for gameplay and it looks like they're involving the doom bots and that's going to be part of his gameplay mechanic and then you've got the sculpt here just looking awesome very regal and imposing just like doom would always want to be um, you're getting a couple of locations you're getting Yancey Street the Baxter building Laturvia um, Mount Wondergore. Looks like they're doing some interesting stuff. You must take one damage for each the, what is that, a civilian or doombot in this location. 
So some cool new mechanics with the locations, that's basically always a good thing. And you get the takeover challenge too, um, which you can use against any villain, it says. Um, and this has something to do with the overflow mechanic in the game. So all this stuff looks awesome. I'm a little, again, thematically a little confused about kind of why it's in this set, but I suspect that they knew that or thought that there might not be an audience for a full third campaign just for Fantastic Four. Um, I like the Fantastic Four. Traditionally, they haven't been as popular just like in pop culture. If you look at, you know, like the movies and television and, and whatnot, there's not a whole lot going on with the Fantastic Four. So maybe they thought they didn't have kind of the they couldn't come up with a hundred stretch goals for the Fantastic Four I don't know that's not a judgment on the Fantastic Four but I can't think of any other than people bleeding for it in the comments which there was a lot of people asking for this expansion um, other than that I can't think of why they would shoehorn this in um, and not include Dark Phoenix other than like I said some kind of potential licensing issue or I guess there could be another expansion coming, but that seems very unlikely because they also announced the Uncanny Pledge. So here we've got basically their gameplay all in. Um, $295. Total, the value totals over $330 because it includes all of these expansions, basically. So you're getting the Core Box, First Class, the Horsemen, Gold and Blue Teams, you're getting the Phoenix Five, Deadpool, X Force, Days of Future Past, and the Fantastic Four. You're getting all the kind of um, exclusive add-ons that come with those sets. So Blob, Bob, Blob, Bob, that's in a different expansion. Blob, Toad, Pyro, Storm, Banshee, Lady Deadpool, and Forge. And then you're getting added on to all of that. You're getting Old Man Logan. Yet another version of Wolverine. Um, again, I don't, I don't imagine anybody's going to be too upset about getting another awesome version of Wolverine. Um, and he he comes with a different gameplay mechanic too. Um, here you can see there's his kind of character art, and they talk about how he starts with a retired card in his hand. Um, that changes the way he he acts. Um, it says his his deck actually doesn't have any attacks in it. Um, he just starts with that retired card and three attack tokens. So that's interesting. Um, yeah. So in the sculpt, there you go. Looks awesome. Really, no complaints there. So there you go, you've got the Fantastic Four expansion and the Uncanny Pledge announced. This is considerably more expensive than the all-in pledge, the all-in gameplay for the original um, set, because I want to say that that was 190 I suppose that it wouldn't be terribly hard for me to look, but... Um, I'm not going to do that because I'm grumpy and lazy. Uh, maybe I'll update in the in the comments. But again, kind of kind of weird that the Fantastic Four are here, but cool. I don't I don't mind it. I'll I'll take it. You know. But where is that Phoenix expansion? That's what I want to know. Um, very odd. But man, that Silver Surfer <laughs> that is awesome. So. Yeah, so I think there's two days left on the campaign, 54 hours basically. We're at 3.846 million. So if you're keeping track on my in the comments on one of my previous videos, I made a couple of um, I made a couple of predictions. I predicted the Dark Phoenix expansion. Looks like I was wrong on that. I predicted that this thing would easily cross four million, which it definitely will. Um, and um, I predicted that. There, I, I don't remember. I think I predicted that there'd be an all-in. Somebody asked if there was going to be an all-in pledge, and, you know, they always do an all-in pledge, so. And it's a pretty good deal. It looks like you're basically, you know, you're basically getting, like, your Days of Future Past expansion for 
for free with the Uncanny Pledge. So um, nothing wrong with that. It's a, it's, an, it's a big buy-in for a very casual game, but this is some serious fan service. And like I said, I would almost view this more as a collectible um, and as an investment. I don't know if you've been watching eBay in relation to Marvel United, the original, but some pretty wacky prices flying around out there for the exclusives from the original game, especially the kind of um, non-gameplay add-ons like the cardboard locations and the playmat. Um, so worst case scenario, if you get a few extra hundred bucks laying around and you're not sure if you're gonna love this or not, buy it and see what happens when uh, when it arrives, you know, um, because you're you this would be perfect trade fodder for some other super expensive Kickstarter that you missed or something like that. Um, and there's virtually no chance that you will there. There's virtually no chance. I'm going to leave it there that you will lose your money from backing this. Um, in terms of the two wave shipping, I don't think I, I'm not going to go for it. I don't really understand the point of it when they're selling all these add-ons like the playmat, cardboard locations, the cardboard villain stuff, the tokens. I don't really see the point of getting the core box and playing it with the inferior components a bunch because they're not shipping that stuff in wave one to my knowledge. Um, so you're gonna be playing it with the cardboard that comes in the um, in the box, and then later when all this other stuff shows up, you'll get your bling. Uh, that seems kind of weird to me. They should ship the bling with the core box and then ship everything else. But uh, to my knowledge, they're not doing that. So um, I'll probably just go with the one one wave shipping. And um, yeah, so that's those are my thoughts on the Fantastic Four expansion and the Uncanny Pledge as we wrap up this wacky ride um in the marvel united x-men campaign comment below let me know what you think how high you think this thing's gonna go i don't know it's gonna go at least 4.1 maybe higher Twenty thousand backers maybe i don't know um it's got it's got legs for sure i don't know about the backers but this number is definitely soft because there's a lot of people who pledge a hundred dollars who are going to bump it up to two 295 um and so that number is going to explode um but yeah that's that's all for now let's talk to y'all later